Hey, it's Boots Owen. Welcome back to another video about this Howard 200 Rotivator. In the last video I took this stuff here apart. This is the gearbox for the axles for the main drive wheels. So I'm just going to give it a clean now. I want to split this clutch apart first, and I think to do that I need to take out this little drift pin here. So it's moving. It's a start. And the washing up bowl there and the it's a washing machine door. I've got some screws soaking in paraffin. You could use any kind of a solvent really, just to get the dirt off them. You can't really see that. Pins nearly out. And a smaller, maybe a parallel punch that will do it. Yeah, lovely. There we go. There's the pin there. So then that should allow this to come off. It does. I'll put that in. That's uh, particularly badly pitted. You can see that's probably supposed to be a straight, smooth shaft, but it's got huge pitting rust on it. Just wipe off as much stuff as I can. I'm not sure if this unscrews. It obviously looks like it does, because it's got a hex shaft on it, but we'll see. It doesn't seem to want to. Now, how can I get this apart? I suspect this needs to come apart, so I'll put this in the vise just to loosen it. So a couple of minutes of hammering there, that just unscrews. This clutch should pop out again, there we go. So I'm just taking it apart so I can give it a big clean, but putting it back together is always fun with these things. Anything with springs in an engine or gearbox. So I'm presuming this is going to unscrew, pull out, and then that little selector pin in there is going to be able to wiggle out through here somehow, like that, yeah. And then that lets this come off, and there's a spring there. It's very simple, really. And then this rides off that. That's your clutch. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, keep washing. So this is to remove the big dirt, but I think this will all get a go on a wire wheel if I'm gonna, I presume I'm gonna paint this or something, I don't know, I don't really like painting. I haven't got any Howard orange, it'll end up black or some other color. The last Howard Rotivator I did years ago wound up blue. Blue was the color of the paint that I had to hand. It'd be best getting a blast on the wheel rather than trying to do it in here. If I can get what I can get off, then that's good, but... This is all quite rusty. What happens with rotivators is they get clay on them. And the clay holds moisture. The moisture kills everything. So it'd be easier for me just to lick those on a dry grinder now, but I've got the gunky oil off the threads. 
20 minutes ago this uh, this oil was clear I've started washing those parts in but in the back there and I'm wearing gloves and uh, cloth gloves over I don't know some kind of rubber gloves. For some reason, the price of gloves has gone way up recently, which I find pretty annoying. See, there's a lot of dirt on that. six washers in there as well. I wonder is this a different type of steel or something because it doesn't seem to have any issues look somebody had to turn that I presume that was turned you know on a on a on a lathe of some kind I wonder if it's stainless or something See there, there's some wear on that clutch around here, but it's you know not a big deal by any stretch. None of this stuff inside was bad. Um, I just need to make sure I don't let it get rusty because. It's been sitting in gearbox oil probably for 50 years, quite possibly the same oil. Um, oops, splashy splashy. Uh, gearbox oil. Right, that's that. So then let's get this bit here done. There's a bit of grease in there. Which is a bit strange. But through there I don't know if you can see that on top you can just see at the end of my brush just a little bit of a white spot there in the center of the screen it's an oil hole so the oil gets directed down into the top of that groove there there isn't a corresponding one on the bottom but I guess gravity doesn't work that way
probably get a wire wheel on the outside to tidy it up inside. Might give it a bit of a rinse after this, but that's it, clean, clean enough for now. And I've attempted to take this off, but it's an awkward one. You've got to get the pulley off and I don't want to damage the pulley. Pulley's on some kind of a tapered shaft, I think, or something like that. And then there's a bearing in here, but there's, there's another bearing on the other end and the bearings feel really good. So I don't even want to, I don't even want to go there. So I'm just going to leave that in place and try and rinse it out a bit. I want to do that here actually because I'm just spreading dirt onto what parts I've just cleaned. So that's the side that drives the implements on the back and this is the side that takes the pulleys. I don't know how much more cleaning there is to do on that other than to give this a good wipe out. I might give it a bit of a rinse as well. I don't think there's any oil seals on those bearings, especially not this one because I know oil flows out of there if you leave it tilted that way. I found that by experience. Yeah, okay. Well. You can see there there's a lot of metallic bits in that in that water that would have been dropped down in the gearbox okay i give all these a polish up and that's about it for today i'm gonna have a look at taking this oil seal apart i've taken the old one out i've taken the old seal out and this is it here you can see the inside of it is completely chewed up that's where it was embedded into the rust and I broke that off. Here's the one off the rotor that isn't completely dead. It has a crack in it uh, somewhere there on the outside. But uh, it's not bad, really, relatively. And I'm not gonna buy a new one. So I wanna see if I can get this off and that's easier said than done because it's tapped in. You see where there's a bit of orange in here. It's kind of staked in, so you gotta pull it upwards. Really, you want something to go in from each side and yank it out, but uh, yeah, screwdriver. I'm not sure if I'm going to wreck it or not. I don't want to wreck it. The other ones I cut off with a chisel, just like this, just chiseling them sideways. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to destroy them. I would like to keep them. The issue is to get a screwdriver in here to pull it up, you end up pushing it in, which then in turn holds it in place. There's the one on the other side, and you can see it's it's... Well, can you see it? Yeah, it's 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 in there and it's okay. And I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to spend money on this thing. It cost me 20 quid and that's as much as I want to spend on it. What could I use? Some kind of a something that comes out and then pulls up. <clears throat> yeah, I really don't know. Like It's easy to think of a tool, but without stopping to make one. And I really don't know if I want to make one. I could try pushing it out like that. Yeah, I can't get a grip on it from there. Almost the inside not quite so I'm pushing it up and I can't get, quite get a grip on it it needs some kind of a hooked screwdriver that one might do it let's just try tapping that see what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is just end up pushing up the uh, outside lip Yeah, and then just cracking it. Is it coming up at all? Nope. Yeah, so it's just coming up and cracking it. I can work that back down again, but that's not the answer. Yeah, I tried just pushing it in. I'll try it one more time, but I, I didn't think it was gonna go. Cause it, like the other one came out intact, but it's not quite the same thing.
end up with a, bit, a little bit too much of it. That's my issue. And that's when it began to crack. Because it is 50 year old, at least, rubber. Don't know when they started making Howard 200s, but it was quite a while ago. Well, this might go now. Seems like I'm having more success than last time. So, I'm going to somehow work it in. prefer to do it this way. That's it. Are we getting in? We're almost there. Yeah. Oh, excellent. That's much better. So then I can tap that back with the hammer. All right. Have to damage it before. Okay, well that's the new seal in. Not a big job. Not a great fit. See, the idea is you're meant to put the seal in and then press the dust cover on. There's just something smooth that I can work that in with. There's a bit of wood. Now, should I get a shaft to go in there? So here's one of the pitted shafts. You can see how badly pitted that is. Like, there's a huge chunk taken out of it. I'm not sure if this is the correct side. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not the correct side. I don't know, actually. Well, it doesn't know, but it goes in and sits there, so that's not a big deal. I thought how to deal with this would be to weld or braze it up and then finish it back to this diameter here in a lathe. Or just smear it up with grease. You know, you could do both. Here's the other one, and it's considerably smoother. Still not perfect. Yeah, it's not... It's not well, it might be that one on this side. I can't remember. No, this is the clutch side. I'm doing it the wrong way around. Yeah, it was the other one. It was the rougher one on this side. And so there we go. That was the oil seal. It's meant to be that one. And this one sits here, like this. Oil seal on a Howard 200 rotavator. Questions or comments? Leave them below. It's not the right way to do it. Thanks for watching. See you later.